Since FO3 and its creation, there has been debate regarding what one should do with the official DLC. Should it be cleaned? How should it be cleaned? What are the pros and cons of altering it? Well, after countless hours of research and forum browsing, viewing tutorials from Arthmore and others, while weighing the similarities and differences between them all, after having a short chat with XEdit's own Zalav, or Zylev, in the Step Wiki's Kelmich, and by the guidance of longtime Fallout community author Roy Batty, these are the answers and method that I have adapted as my own. The reasoning behind the process is in its own section at the end of the video. If you have questions or concerns, feel free to browse that section before performing the following tasks. This is not your average cleaning process. First, we are going to make a backup of the vanilla ESMs in case we ever need them. GOG owners will appreciate this. We will then adjust some of FO3 Edit's cleaning settings, fix the deleted nav meshes within the pit and broken steel ESMs, and finally, once and only once the nav meshes are fixed, clean all of the DLC. Open the Fallout 3 game folder. Open the data folder. Hold the control key and without letting go, select the following files. Anchorage ESM, Broken Steel ESM, Point Lookout, The Pit, and the Zeta ESM. Still holding control, push the letter C to copy the selection. You can paste these files anywhere you like. Put them somewhere safe. Being that I like to keep everything together, I'm going to create a new folder right here in the data folder and name it Original ESMs. Open the folder and push Control plus V to paste the copies inside. Open Mod Organizer. Launch FO3 Edit. Select OK. It doesn't matter what files are loaded. Once loaded, right-click anywhere in the left pane, select Other, and then select Options. Within the General tab, deactivate the checkboxes for FO3, FNV, Sort FLST, and Sort Infos. Open the Cleaning tab, deactivate every checkbox. Once done, select OK. You will not touch these settings again unless we decide to create a merged patch later in the series. These settings will remain as we left them for as long as we use XEdit to clean plugins for Fallout 3. Close XEdit to assure that the changes have been implemented. Roy Batty has helped me understand the process of finding and fixing deleted nav meshes for Fallout 3's official DLC. This process would generally require the use of both FO3 Edit and the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. However, to save on time and testing, Roy has provided me with what we need for the process and we can do all of it in FO3 Edit. I can't thank Roy enough for the amount of time that he has saved me. For the sake of the My Way Guide, it is okay if you don't understand the following explanations. Just follow along and do what is shown so that you aren't left behind. The more we mod, the more that everything will make sense. The form IDs that we cover are provided in the video description for reference. Open Mod Organizer and launch FO3 Edit. Make sure that every checkbox is activated and then select OK. At the top left of XEdit, in the Form ID search bar, enter the ID 0005A7C0. This is the first Fallout 3 ESM nav mesh that has been deleted by the Pit DLC. Push Enter to be taken to the location in the Fallout 3 ESM where the ID exists. In the right pane, where the vertical, the pit ESM column, and the horizontal form ID column meet, locate the same ID that we just entered, 0005A7C0. Hold the control key and click on it. This takes us to the location in the pit ESM where the form ID has been edited. Now in the left pane, right-click the form ID, which is now highlighted. Again, 0005A7C0, and select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. The edit that the pit ESM made to the Fallout 3 ESM is now removed. However, the actual in-game navigation mesh is now being referenced by two form IDs. The original ID in the Fallout 3 ESM that the pit previously edited, and a new form ID that the pit ESM gave to the original when it altered it. Still in the left panes list, locate the navigation mesh 02004157. This is the new ID that the Pit ESM created. Right-click it and select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box and replace it with the ID of the deleted nav mesh that we just removed, 0005A7C0. Select OK. Right-click in the Record Select window that opens. Select All. These records reference the nav mesh that we are changing the ID of and we need to assure that they are all updated to it. Select OK. You may need to select OK twice. Don't close and save it until all of the nav meshes have been fixed. 
We just fixed our first Elite Nav Mesh. There are four more in the Pit DLC to fix, and 12 in Broken Steel. I am going to walk you through each one, but this time without additional explanation to speed things up. If you understand the process, feel free to fix the other nav meshes on your own by using the IDs in the description or pinned comment. For those who want to follow along with me, let's get to it. In the Form ID search bar, enter the ID 0005A7BF. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID that we just entered. Hold the Control key and click on it. In the left pane, right-click the Form ID, again 0005A7BF, and select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left pane's list, locate the navigation mesh 02004156. Right-click it and select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box and replace it with 0005A7BF. Select OK. Right-click in the Record Select window and select All. Select OK again. In the Form ID search bar, enter the ID 0005A76F. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID that we just entered. Hold the Control key and click on it. In the left pane, right-click the same Form ID and select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left pane's list, locate the navigation mesh 02001841. Right-click it and select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box and replace it with 0005A76F. Select OK. Right-click in the Record Select window and select All. Select OK again, twice if need be. In the Form ID search bar, enter 0005A772. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the ID that we just entered. Hold the Control key and click on it. In the left pane, right-click the Form ID and select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left pane's list, locate the navigation mesh 02001844. Right-click it, select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box, replace it with 0005A772. Select OK. Right-click in the Record Select window, select All. Select OK. In the Form ID search bar, enter 0005A760. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID, hold the control key and click on it. In the left pane, right click the form ID and select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. Still in the left pane, locate the navigation mesh 02001842. Right click it, select change form ID. Delete the ID in the box, replace it with 0005A760. Select OK. Right click in the record select window, select all. Select OK. We have just finished the pit ESM onto Broken Steel. In the Form ID search bar, enter 000749FB. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID. Hold the Control key, click on it. In the left pane, right click the Form ID, select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left pane, locate the mesh 03005338. Right click it and select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box, replace it with 000749FB. Select OK. Right-click in the window, select All, select OK again. In the Form ID search bar, enter 000749FA. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID. Hold the Control key, click on it. In the left pane, right-click the Form ID and select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left pane, locate the navigation mesh 03005339. Right click it, select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box, replace it with 00749FA. Select OK. Right click in the Record Select window, select All, select OK. In the Form ID search, enter 00072078. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the ID. Hold Control and click on it. In the left pane, right-click the Form ID, select Remove. At the confirmation, select Yes. Still in the left pane, locate the mesh 03005338A. Right-click it, select Change Form ID. Delete the ID, replace it with 0007207.8. Select OK. Right-click in the window, select All, select OK. In the Form ID search bar, Enter 00072949E. 
push enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID. Hold control, click on it. In the left pane, right click the ID. Select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. In the left pane list, locate the navigation mesh 030094CE. Right click it, select change form ID. Clear out the box, replace it with 0007294E. Select OK. Right click in the record select window, select all, select OK. In the form ID search bar, enter 0005FA14. Push enter. In the right pane, locate the same ID. Hold control, click on it. In the left pane, right click the form ID and select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. Still in the left pane, locate the navigation mesh 03007351. Right click it, select change form ID. Delete the ID in the box, replace it with 0005FA14. Select OK. Right click in the window, select all, select OK. In the form ID search bar, enter 00071F47. Push enter. In the right pane, locate the ID, hold the control key, click on it. In the left pane, right click the form ID, select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. Still in the left, locate the mesh 03006867. Right click it, select change form ID. Delete the ID in the box, replace it with 00071F47. Select OK. Right click in the record select window, select all, select OK. In the Form ID search bar, enter 00071F46. In the right pane, locate the same ID, hold control, click on it. In the left pane, right click the Form ID, select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left, locate the navigation mesh 03006868. Right click it, select Change Form ID. Delete the ID in the box. Replace it with 00071F46. Select OK. Right click in the window. Select All. Select OK. In the search bar, enter the ID 00056D72. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the ID. Hold Control. Click on it. In the left, right click the ID. Select Remove. At the confirmation, select Yes. Still in the left, Locate the mesh 030091CC. Right click it, select Change Form ID. Delete the ID, replace it with 00056D72. Select OK. Right click in the record select window, select All. Select OK again. In the Form ID search bar, enter 000C6E56. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the ID, hold Control, click on it. In the left pane, Right-click the form ID, select Remove. At the confirmation window, select Yes. Still in the left, locate the navigation mesh 0300CA1F. Right-click it, select Change Form ID, delete the ID, replace it with 000C6E56. Select OK. Right-click in the record select window, select All. Select OK. Only three more to go, folks. In the form ID search bar, enter 000B2260. Enter. In the right pane, locate the ID, hold control, click on it. In the left, right click the ID, select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. Still in the left, locate the navigation mesh 03008998. Right click it, select change form ID. Leave the ID, replace it with 000B2260. Select OK. Right click in the window, select all, select OK. Two more to go. In the form ID search bar, enter 000B225D, push enter. In the right pane, locate the ID, hold control, click on it. In the left, right click the form ID, select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. Still in the left, locate the mesh 03008997, right click it, Select Change Form ID, delete the ID, replace it with 000B225D. Select OK. Right click in the window, select All, select OK. Final one. In the Form ID search bar, enter the ID 000B21E7. Push Enter. In the right pane, locate the ID, 
hold control, click on it. In the left, right click the form ID, select remove. At the confirmation window, select yes. Still in the left, locate the mesh 03008996. Right click it, select change form ID, delete the ID in the box and replace it with 000B21E7. Select OK. Right click in the record select window one final time. Select all, select OK. Again, push OK twice if you need to. We have just finished fixing all of the deleted nav meshes from the DLC. Well done. Click the X at the top right of the application. Assure that both the pit and broken steel ESMs are checkmarked. Select OK. Launch FO3 Edit via Mod Organizer. Double click the Anchorage ESM. Once the files are loaded, right click the Anchorage ESM in the left pane. Select Apply Filter for Cleaning. Right click the ESM again and select Remove Identical to Master Records. Right click it a final time and select Undelete and Disable References. Select the X at the top right of the window, assure that the Anchorage ESM is checkmarked, and select OK. Relaunch FO3 Edit. Double click the PIT ESM to load both it and its master files and repeat the process. Apply filter for cleaning, remove identical to master records, undelete and disable references, close and save the work by assuring that the ESM is checkmarked. Repeat this process for the broken steel ESM, followed by the point lookout ESM, and finally the Zeta ESM. Once all of the DLC is clean, return to the game's data folder. Highlight all of the DLC, not the Fallout 3 ESM, then right click and use either WinRare or 7-Zip to add these files to an archive. Name the archive DLC Cleaned or something similar. In a second window, open the location that you chose in the previous video to store your mod archives to. Drag and drop the DLC Cleaned archive inside. Open Mod Organizer. In the right pane, open the Downloads tab. Double click to install the DLC Cleaned archive. Activate the mod in the left pane. Look in the Plugins tab. If the ESMs appear to be out of order, run Loot to sort them. If the DLC were no longer in the game's data folder when you looked post-cleaning, they will have been moved to Mod Organizer's Overwrite folder. Why this will happen for some, but not everyone, I am not sure. You can double-click on Overwrite to see if they are in there. In this case, instead of adding the ESMs to an archive, all that you have to do is right-click Overwrite, select Create Mod, give it a name, and then activate it in MO's left pane. First, let me start by saying that I could have easily stuck with the basic cleaning method from the first attempt with this series and very few people would have been any wiser to it. I like to do things right. Basic cleaning of the ESMs may or may not cause you issues, and they may or may not provide you much benefit. But because I told you in both the original Foundation video, as well as in the reboot, that we are going to do this series right, I spent an additional two weeks working with community members who know more than I do on the subject, practicing not only what you have seen in the video, but going beyond it to understand the process from other perspectives. I assure you that nothing in this video is unnecessary, nor a guess or simply second-hand information. Secondly, you can't upload these files so that others can download them to skip the process, because the edits need to be made directly to the official DLC. Uploading them would be copyright infringement, and you would be banned from various places in the community. If I could upload them, I would. It would gain me many new subscribers, praises, and it would have saved me hours in video editing. If doing this is too much work for you, then the rest of the series, where we add hundreds of mods in a specific order, pick many of them apart, and add some personally made patches to them, will definitely be too much. Keep in mind that everything mentioned in this video is specific and only related to Fallout 3. The settings that we altered in X-Edit also apply to Fallout New Vegas. The reason that we changed the settings in X-Edit before cleaning the DLC and why we are leaving the settings how we have set them is because of this. By default, X-Edit moves static objects way down in the Z-axis after it undeletes records. This is not only fine in games like Skyrim, but potentially beneficial. For Fallout 3 and New Vegas, doing this can cause what has been labeled as the Whirlwind of Doom. Static objects may start flying at your character like he or she is Magneto and keep you from moving. This doesn't happen all of the time, and many who have played the game for years have not experienced it. Though, it does happen, and it has happened to enough users to make the preventative measures that we have taken a necessity. 
This issue happens because there are issues with the game's Havoc Bounds. I've been told Nevada Skies and New Vegas Bounties for FNV, as well as the Reavers area and the Presidential Metro for Fallout 3's Broken Steel ESM are repeat offenders regarding this topic. This is why we deactivate the Set Z position settings and the replace MSTT, Movable Static Records, settings as well. The reason that we deactivate FLST is because when activated, it can break mods that have sorted form lists. Sorting FLST is only needed if creating a merged patch. Again, if we create one towards the end of the guide, we will re-enable the setting, but only at that point. We deactivate sort infos because it's simply not needed. The reason that we fix the deleted nav meshes with this game is because there are reproducible CTDs caused by them. The most noted crashes happen near the Jefferson Memorial. When corrected, even in a game that you don't install mods to, these crashes cease to exist. Many who have played the game, including myself, will not have experienced these crashes due to the past they choose when playing. But since there are issues and situations that we could run into, the only reason to skip the process would be due to laziness. If you noticed when we fixed the nav meshes, we did the pit ESM before Broken Steel. This is because we fixed top down with the DLC to assure accuracy. This is the same reason that we clean ESMs top to bottom. The order may not always be necessary, but it's good practice in the case that it is. It helps to take some thinking out of it, which in turn saves some time. When fixing deleted nav meshes, especially for test games, it's been good practice to save the ESMs in the CK to assure that the Navi records are properly updated. However, doing so can cause errors. I have been assured that doing what we have done in this video, in the manner and order that we have done it, is the correct way to do it for these files with Fallout 3. Though, because I like to be safe, we have made backups of the original ESMs. You can always drop the Pit and Broken Steel plugins back into the data folder and delete the ones that we have altered. At the end of the day, most everything that has to do with modding is personal choice. Choices like these are also why this series is titled My Way, and not This or That Person's Way. Even though I have consulted and learned from many mod authors throughout the community, specifically for this series, what I do does not necessarily reflect their thoughts on the topic. I have done my best to sort through the information that I have been given, and I have made these educated decisions for myself. And let me say this again one final time. What this video shows is strictly for Fallout 3. Nothing in this video should be taken as directions of what to do for other games. We will cover what to do in other games when those series are created, and after I have spoken with longtime authors in those communities. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial, modding Fallout 3, my way, cleaning the DLC. A huge thank you to Roy Batty for all that he has done for me in this series. Another thank you to Kelmich for not only working with me and providing me with information, but for updating the clear and present danger guide based on some of my findings. A giant thank you to Zalav of FO3Edit for setting me down the path of proper checks and balances, regardless of whether or not the methods are endorsed. Thank you to Arthmore for his nav mesh guides and to everyone else in the community who has helped out with this subject. In the next video, we will cover and rehash some of the methods and practices that I use to organize my mods and to make my modding experience more comfortable. That video will be the only optional one in the entire series. Afterwards, we hit the ground modding and we don't look back. I know it took me an additional two weeks to get this video remade, but I feel the time put into it was worth it. Of course, a giant Liberty Prime size thank you to everyone supporting and watching this series, including warrior poet Brad Nichols for a very helpful notation regarding the overwrite folder. I hope that you join me in the next video and all to come. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for supporting, and thank you for watching.